What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So, guys, I apologize. Uh, real life stuff has been happening. I've been trying to get videos recorded, but every time I go to record, something else happens. <laughs> so, videos have been a little sparse recently. I'm going to try and fix that, but I haven't been neglecting the world. I've been doing stuff around here. Not a whole lot of crazy stuff, but I've been doing stuff. Uh, so some of the things that I have done is I finally went around and I installed this light blue stained glass that is chiseled as streaked in pretty much all of our window areas around here. Now, I didn't do it in this section, the outside section, because I feel like we will end up expanding this area over here. Stupid rain. Um, but like the inside walls, we have glass. Uh, the outside walls, we don't, because this might end up being bigger as we put things over here like bigger uh, altars we might do like the max size blood altar over here and that's like a 21 by 21 thing I think this is only 17 wide so things like that we're uh, just kind of preparing for the future I don't want to put stuff in place and then have to tear it down later anyway uh, but the base feels a lot more cozy now I definitely don't have any fear of being creepered or whatever now that we got essentially walls everywhere uh, we do have these openings in four different sections, but honestly, I doubt that we're ever going to have a problem with that. Um, yeah, and also I've torched up around the base quite a bit, so it would be very hard for monsters to come over here and find me. Now, I did see there was a yellow X over there on top of the altar, but I'm not really that worried about it. Uh, anyway, other things that I've done. Uh, I think last episode we were working with enchanting. Yeah, so we were enchanting our diamond meshes, trying to get fortune and efficiency on there, right? So we did that, and we made a whole bunch of books and the Civ fortune and all this stuff. Um, but then I was kind of looking, let's clear this out. I was looking at a way to power our big reactor. We need a lot of power in order to uh, empower the stuff that we're trying to do. So empowered these things here. All of these different stuff costs a lot of RF in order to create, right? And we needed a bunch of these to make these terrestrial artifacts. And we needed these in order to, what was it? This one. You yeah, had to make the lithorite crystal. So I just got done pulling that out of our uh, fluid transposer. Yeah, it takes half a ingot of enderium in order to make one of these. I pulled that out. We ended up getting the quest complete for that. I haven't touched it, but we have that complete now. Uh, but anyway, I was in the process of making these empowered void crystal blocks and these things take way more power than I was expecting. Yeah, I made a bunch of diamond ones, I made some redstone ones and some emerald ones and those all were fine. There wasn't a lot of problems with that. But yeah, trying to make the void ones, those are taking a ridiculous amount of power. Um, so I was trying some things here in order to get more power out of our extreme reactor and make this go faster. Uh, we got some cryo stabilized flux ducts as a reward previously. So I put that on our redstone flux power tap here, and then I've connected leadstone flux ducts to multiple sides of this thing. Now, normally when you connect, um, the flux duct to multiple sides, we hold shift on here. It says transfer amount is per connection right so it transfers 2000 rf per tick per connection so we have four connections one on the bottom three on the sides we should get 8000 rf per tick through here and then over at our empowerer each of these display stands has their own flux duct touching the bottom so that should be 2000 rf per tick per display stand right each of those got their own connection well at least that's the way my math works i don't know maybe somebody else's math doesn't work that way but anyway, when I try to empower this stuff over here, let's do our final one. Need that, black quartz, black iron. That black iron we'll talk about in a minute. That actually was a little difficult to do. But anyway, so we got that crafting up over here. That should be 8,000 RF per tick that we're pulling, right? Um, yeah, so let's come over here. I did make a computer. We kind of saw that there was computer craft in here before, and I used one of my very old programs from FTB Infinity Evolved to see the status of what's going on in our extreme reactor. So you can see here that we are pulling over 4,000 RF per tick, 
and that's the current energy and we can see that it's discharging once this gets down to i think 300 000 or 3 million or 2 million or something like that it'll uh start charging um but anyway yeah, we are pulling only 4,000 RF per tick, which doesn't really make sense to me. Unless there is some limitation on these redstone flux power taps that I haven't seen yet. That could be a thing. I did make another redstone flux power tap. We could try installing that in there and see if that makes any difference. Let's try that. Redstone flux power tap. Yeah, I was going to put that in there, and then I realized that we had the cryo stabilized, and then I didn't even try putting this in here. So let's give this a try and see if that makes any difference. It'll turn off the reactor, put that there. Uh, we need to click this back on because I broke the reactor. Uh, okay, so it's charging. Okay, so this must be done over there, so we're no longer pulling power. Uh, actually, no, it looks like we are pulling power still. Why is that charging? I'm curious. What's going on here? Uh, no, we're pulling power. I wonder if that is done, if it just looks like it's not done from back here. I don't know. What are we doing? It is still pulling power. Why is our reactor still gaining power? <laughs> oh, this is confusing. I don't understand what's going on here. But anyway, uh, we should be pulling you know, quite a bit of power per connection here. And it doesn't feel like we're pulling that much. So there's gotta be some limitation that's going on that I'm not quite sure of. Energy produced, 4,000, usage 4,000. Well, now it feels like we're making double the power that we were before. Yeah, something's weird. But anyway, if you guys wanna check out this program, if you're playing in this mod pack, um, all you gotta do is make one of these computers. Now it's just discharge. Oh, I need to do control T to terminate. Okay. So what you do is you want to do a paste bin get, and then you want to get the name of the paste bin, which is GK798 uh, MXT. And then you want to set that name to startup. So you're saying run the paste bin program, get that paste bin file, and then you're going to download it into the file called startup, right? So it says file already exists because I've already done that. We could do startup one so you guys can see what that looks like. So it says connecting to paste bin, success downloading. So now if we edit startup one, this is uh, the file that we just downloaded. Like I said, really old FTB Infinity Evolved episode 50. If you guys want to watch the episode <laughs> where I made this, you can search for that or just put in the URL right there. Um, but pretty much all this thing does is it's just looking to see if the power is greater than 8 million then it sets the control rod levels, all of them, we only have one, to 100%, fully inserts it, so essentially turning the reactor off. And then if it gets below or equal to two million, then it says the control rod levels, again, we only have one, to zero, so it essentially makes the reactor go full blast to charge itself. And that just shows like what it's doing. I mean, that's pretty much all we're doing here. Um, so let's turn this thing back on, control exit, and if I do a control R to reboot, it'll just run that program since we already have that as called startup, so it just automatically will run that thing. Um, so yeah, that's essentially what that thing does here. It looks like we're done. Uh, yeah, I still don't understand the whole flux duct issue. I wonder, now, now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if we have the power coming over here, like being pulled off like one of these capacitors somewhere. Maybe that's blocking it. I'll have to run through and check out all of the different connections. But I thought that we just had the one wire running all the way over and like we have capacitors feeding into it. But if it, that is connection broken somewhere, then I guess that makes sense. Um, I also did replace the water inside the extreme reactor over here with molten ender pearl. Yeah. So previously when we had water in the reactor, we were only making about 2000 RF per tick. Oh, this thing looks like, what's oh, it is discharging. I thought it was still running. Uh, we were making only about 2000 RF per tick. When I swapped it out for the molten uh, ender pearl, we're now making just over 4,000. So it essentially doubled our power production just by swapping out the liquid inside the reactor. That's the only change I made. Uh, oh, by the way, the computer does have to have a computer port, a reactor computer port in order to operate, right? Uh, why did, oh, you know what? I never named this computer. So me breaking it and sending it back deleted the info. Uh, we have to do a, 
Uh, what do you do? A label set? Label set uh, reactor? Computer label set to reactor. Okay, so now it knows the name of this computer. Now I have to actually do <laughs> the paste bin get GK798MXT startup. Okay, so now that startup, I'm going to show you this. If we break the computer and set it down, it should just be working. Or you can do a control R. Uh, so now this thing will always remember the program in there. Yeah, I didn't label it before, so I forgot. All right, well, yeah. So other things that I was doing, um, getting back to this over here, I was trying to figure out a way to get more power from the reactor, right? In order to do that, we needed to get ourselves some uranium. Uh, so the uranium ore from immersive engineering can be made through this uranium ore piece. The uranium ore piece we get from crushed end stone, but only on the flint stiffened mesh and on the iron stiffened mesh. So if we look at that, it's a 30% chance on the iron stiffened mesh and only a 20% on the flint. So I made six more iron stiffened meshes. And of course, since we just got done enchanting them and we have the efficiency and fortune, I wanted to apply that to these as well. Okay. So <laughs> that's got pretty expensive. We were running low on experience over here, right? Um, so I was trying to devise a way to do that a little bit more cost effectively. So what I did is I made a sieve efficiency five and sieve fortune three enchanted plate. So every time we want to make one of those, we can just make a book. It'll print it out and have both of those enchants on there, which is really good. Problem is we can only make three per enchanted plate and then it costs 60 levels, 60 levels to make a new one of those. It's absolutely ridiculous. So I saw that there was an item repairer from actually addition since we've been using that mod for the empower over there. And that cost four diamond crystal blocks. So I just got done making four of those and we had some of these empowered and Nori from chests and stuff. So I went with making the item repairer. So yeah, we have one of those now. Uh, the item repairer can repair various different things, including these enchanted plates. So like we take the Civ Fortune 2 plate over here. It's already been used twice, two out of three times. And we put it in here. Hmm, it's completely full again, right? So this is a trick that we've used before in other playthroughs. Um, and that is very good. So you do have to make sure, absolutely sure, you're camping uh, your printing press that it only produces two you remove one or two, I guess, but two at the most, you remove the plate, you stick in the re item repair, and then you keep going. That way you don't have to keep spending the 60 levels to make a new one of these. Uh, so each one of those books that prints out the efficiency five and Civ fortune three, I believe cost 12 levels to apply to each one of the meshes over here, which is far, far better than what we were looking at previously. So anyway, now that we have the meshes here that are enchanted, uh, I was trying to figure out a way to get more gravel. So this guy right here, Material Stonework Factory, we had this set up previously to turn cobblestone to gravel to sand and then smelt that into glass, right? Well, I have since repurposed this thing to only take cobble and turn it into gravel. I made the energy upgrade one and two and the speed upgrade one and two. It does cost a little bit more power in order to operate. I'm not sure exactly how much it is. It's impossible to read that, but we're making four at a time and quite quickly. That's all going into a compacting drawer here. And this guy has 55,000 gravel or 682 double compressed five. 55,000 gravel for us to start working with, which is fantastic. So if I grab some stacks of this, we can come over to our sieve over here and just start sieving away and making all sorts of good stuff happen, including diamonds, emeralds, and we should be getting, oh, you know what, that's the uh, gravel, <laughs> I got confused. The gravel, I was doing this for making diamonds, emeralds and iron ore mm -hmm. we needed a lot of iron ore my mistake i've been doing a lot of stuff off camera here and i got confused but anyway uh yeah we can take this stuff over here the crushed end stone which we can just go to the end and vein mine for a whole lot of it now we're getting ourselves the uranium ore pieces 
yeah, right here. So we can take these. I want to uh, just trying to right click one so I can put it back in here. We can take those, those convert into the ores themselves, right? Uranium ore. We can put that over into our pulverizer, pulverize that, and then smelt that down into uranium ingots. All right, so now that we have the uranium ingots, now we have a way to keep our reactor going all the time. So yes, we have a lot of power, which is fantastic. So let's put that right into here. There we go. And we can take our, whoop, the game freeze. Oh, it's just not showing the tooltip. The cyanide ingot, there they are. Okay, so now that we have all of that going, <laughs> we're able to get our empowerer going for the rest of the stuff that we're trying to do here. So I am going to continue on, try and make the rest of these empowered blocks. Yeah, we gotta remake those diamond ones since those got put into the item repairer over here, but those aren't so bad to make. But anyway, let me go ahead and get to that and we'll be right back guys. All right guys, so now that we have four of each of these blocks and I know that we, need different quantities of this, obviously, since, uh, yeah, we require four of those per and just one of each of these other ones. So we'll have to make a bunch more of these redstone, not a big deal. Uh, but now that we have four of each of these blocks, we should be able to start making more of these terrestrial artifacts, which we can put with the molten and dirium to make the litharite. And we're gonna need a whole lot of this litharite in order to proceed into environmental tech. So in order to like do anything with environmental tech, we have to make this digital guide. This is the book to the mod, tells you how much of each of the different blocks you need and all that kind of stuff. It is from a different mod itself. It's from Valkyrie Lib. Um, in fact, if you search for the assembler uh, from environmental tech, you press shift, it tells you you can search for the digital guide from that mod, or you can just type in digital guide and it shows right here. So let's make the digital guide so we kind of know what we're getting into here. I know it's going to be a lot of resources. Uh, so environmental material guide, environmental tech. So we want to start producing more of those litharite crystals without us having to do this process right now. So we need to get ourselves a void or miner, I believe. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, so the litharite crystal comes from the void or miner. Right, so if we make the green laser lens, we'll have a 13, almost 14% chance of getting that per ore that it mines, and that just stops us from having to make the silliness here, the terrestrial artifacts. But in order to get to the void ore miner tier one, we have to make the actual block itself, which requires a bunch of litharite, right? And then we have to make all the other blocks for the multi-block structure. So let's come in here and take a look at this thing. So void, what's void ore miner? Let me just double check. Was it void or void resource? I always get those two confused. It is void or miner. So the void or miner, I, I believe they all use the same multi-block structure, so it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, we do need structure frame tier one, 24 of them, uh, 20 structure panels. So the structure frame tier one, 24. 24, so that means we need 48 litharite crystals, plus at least four more blocks of it, plus 36 more. Man, we're gonna need so much of this stuff. Uh, what about the, what's the other thing? This is structure panel. The structure panel does not require litharite, but does require a lot of resources in order to make them goodness, that's expensive. Okay. So we're gonna, let's just say about a hundred, <laughs> cause that's about what we're gonna need here. Oh my goodness, that is so many. So if we go back to this, each one of these different empowered is just one of each. So we need about a hundred of these separate things. We have 36. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to do so much of this. A redstone, I'll just leave it alone for now. So we're about a third of the way-ish, a third of the way here for all of these different resources. And then we're gonna need like uh, a bunch more of these four times, <laughs> well, I guess 12 times more. Yeah, anyway, uh, it's gonna be a little expensive in order for us to do this. The empowered redstone once again require these redstone reception coils, Ardite. So we're gonna have to get a whole bunch more Ardite. 
I don't think we have enough. We have some, but we can go to the nether and get that. That's not a huge issue. Uh, oh, what's recipe? And then this comes from rubies, which we can now get from sifting, I believe. So that's not a big deal. So crushed instant on the diamond stiffen can get us this ruby. So we have a way of doing that, or we could also do the crushed stuff. We can't do that. Um, the red nether brick, which is nether brick plus nether wart. And then the redstone reception coil, that was a little expensive. If I remember correctly, it was like two of these compressed redstone for one gold to do that. So yeah, there's a whole bunch more stuff that we're going to have to do here in order to proceed. <laughs> oh my goodness. Our diet. We might as well get all this stuff cooking up over here. I think I was doing some iron. Yeah, that needs to finish doing its thing. And then some more pulverized nickel. Yeah, I'm going to have to go to the nether and collect a whole lot more of this ardite in order for us to proceed here. Why do I have iridium shards on me? How'd that happen? Weird. Uh, yeah, this is almost done. Okay, and then the nickel. Cool. Okay, so ardite can go in there. We'll just double that up. And then I gotta take this smelted and turn it into the tool rods, not a big deal. Okay, well let me start working on this and see how long this is gonna take and we'll be back guys. So I went to the nether and I got a whole bunch of andesite and while I was there I was, or not andesite, I'm sorry, ardite. <laughs> I was thinking andesite because uh, we need beryllium from this stuff. Anyway, uh, I picked up a whole bunch of ardite and then uh, while I was there I was grabbing cobalt. So we got a whole lot of stuff. I made a bunch of hoppers here to semi-automate this so I can just put in however many I want in each one of these different hoppers. Uh, they get put into the display stands and then of course our item right here in the center, our red stona. Uh, we have two hoppers on the empower, one for when it's completed and one to put in the empowered item. So yeah, we are semi-automating this, not a big deal. I'm making a whole lot of these redstone, 36 blocks of this. Is that too many? I don't know. I'm just doing some quick maths here. <laughs> I'm going to do nine more blocks of each of these different types. But yeah, I was just kind of waiting for this to finish up. I wanted to show you guys what we're doing here. Um, so while that's going, I was kind of looking at our reactor and it's keeping up. We're actually gaining a little bit of power while that's going over there, which is pretty good. Um, but yeah, we do have to use a rock crusher here, which costs 8,000 RF per tick. I was going to make some more beryllium to start working on the emerald, the empowered emerald ones, but yeah, 8,000 RF per tick plus what we're already doing over there. I got to wait for that to finish up, which I, it looks like it might be done now. Yeah. Uh, so that's charging up now, which is great. Uh, now I can take some andesite, put it into here. Got to keep an eye on this because we're drawing more power than what we're using. Uh, yeah, and we got to make at least nine of this beryllium, I guess five more. I'll hold off. I'm going to wait for the reactor to get mostly full so I can do a few of them at a time. The rock crusher is weird. If you run out of power, like this bar drops down, the progress slows down, and then you're just wasting power because you don't have enough to actually do the process. So you kind of have to get a buffer of power going before you can process that. And I kind of think that's why the, uh, the empowered void crystals, they don't have anything that costs a lot of power like that in the recipe, like this beryllium. I think that might be why this costs so much to empower as opposed to like the diamond and the emerald. I don't know, just a thought. But anyway, uh, just giving you guys an update on what we're doing here and we'll be right back guys. All right, guys. So I spent all this time here getting all of our stuff empowered. We have all of this. I don't know if that's enough. Actually, I haven't actually, I haven't mapped it out. I think it is. We might have more than what we need, but we have a lot of this stuff. We might not have enough redstone. I'm not sure, but I went around since the leadstone, we were having problems with it transferring more than like 4,000 RF per tick total. I decided to start upgrading. So the next one's up is the hard influx duct, which is four times as much. But then I was like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and start into the big boy section, the redstone energy flux duct. Now these are a little bit more expensive. These, the recipe has been changed to this mod pack. So in order to make 16 of those, you need two of the hardened flux ducts. I actually did not realize that we were going to need only two per when I started this. So I made a whole bunch of the leadstone make a whole bunch of the hardened since uh, the hardened is one for one with the leadstone. Anyway, 
So we have a lot more of the hardened and the leadstone flux duct since you only need two hardened ones plus some electrum and the hardened glass for 16 of these. Well, from this point, it's the normal recipe. The uh, redstone energy flux duct requires two redstone that has been melted down to destabilize redstone and then filled, right? So anyway, our entire base, the entire power supply has been replaced with these that are 18,000 RF per tick. Yep, I went around everywhere and replaced them all. So you, <laughs> let's take a look at the flux ducts we have remaining. So we have 260 of these. Yeah, we have 56 more of the hard and flux ducts and then 17 remaining redstone energy flux ducts. So we have a whole bunch of those all over the place. Everywhere that we have the leadstone has now been swapped out for the redstone. Uh, the other part of this, the redstone energy, was the hardened glass. And we have that. To make the hardened glass, it is just for pulverized obsidian plus a pulverized lead, I think, to make two of them. Actually, I can't remember. Anyway, we have a whole bunch of that stuff. It was pretty easy. We have in the induction smelter. And then I went ahead, since this was taking a long time to melt down all that redstone, I upgraded our magma crucible to the signalum level. We had a signalum kit, not a convert. Well, we have a conversion kit, but we had a regular signalum kit, uh, upgrade kit. So I made the hardened one and then I made the reinforced one. And so we upgraded this and I put in some auxiliary reception coils. This thing now takes 2000 RF per tick to melt stuff. But we're going to want that speed anyway. And then we're also going to want to upgrade our fluid transposer. Because if I remember correctly, making this guy, the terrestrial artifact, even though it only requires half a ingot of melted fluid, that still took like forever <laughs> to uh, transpose that onto it. But anyway, enough talk. Let's start making these things. So to make these, we do this. There's one full stack. How much more can we make? 26 more. So that's going to put us at 90. Yeah. 80, four and six, that's 90. So we have 90 of those. We have no more redstone left, but we got a bunch of these empowered ones. I guess I made three blocks too many or three blocks additional of all of these. That should be fine. We'll keep those for later. The redstone really isn't that big of a deal to make. And then also this reservoir here was that other half an ingot of the molten endurium. When I went to go start making the, uh, redstone flux ducts. I realized, hey, the flu is not going in here. Yes, because it had this little itty bit of this stuff in here. Let's put that back into the fluid transposer. And then one of those guys. So it is working. Kind of. Very slowly. Now, we did have that other signalum, this thing, the conversion kit. I believe that upgrades straight to that block let's do this all right so we are gaining power here which is great that makes this go a little bit faster yeah the more power of these machines the thermal expansion can hold the faster the block is and we can make it even faster yet by putting in the uh reception coils let's grab that other augment we had one of them now the augment also increases the amount of power this machine can hold but also increases the rf per tick that it takes to make so that's one litherite crystal. That went pretty quickly. I do need to make the rest of these things. So that's two more of those guys. So two gold. And then we're going to need two more redstone. I don't have any more of those things made. <laughs> I made just enough for the other uh, coils that we were making earlier. I upgraded this machine further. So it has, is it eight? Well, yeah, it's eight of eight of the speed and then eight of eight of the energy, which we already had those in there. Okay, so we have these guys. Oh, you know what? I need two more. It's two per ingot. So redstone, two more of those. You know what? I'll grab another stack. After we get the two that we need, I'll just do a full stack so we have those for later. All right, that's done. We'll put those in there so we can do... Eh, we'll just do it all on the same machine. These I do need to upgrade further. I think I got one more speed in the first two. But yeah, I want to upgrade those to the maximum speed. So those things go just that much faster. So the augment, let's take a look at that. The auxiliary reception coil. So there's two of those guys. So hopefully this machine will go quite quickly when we start using it. 
So this uses 1,500 RF per tick, slightly less expensive than the Magma Crucible at the same speed, just 500 RF per tick less. All right, so now that we have this here, we need to get more Molten Enderium. So the Enderium, once again, Magma Crucible, is there not... Do we have to make it directly? Oh, no, 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 that's right, Enderium. We can do the powder. I was like, there's a thermal expansion recipe for this. So yeah, resonant ender bucket plus pulverized platinum and then some lead. So we do have a little bit of extra platinum. Not a whole lot, but a little bit extra. I guess what we need to do is figure out how we get this platinum because we are going to need a lot of this stuff in order to make the enderium that we need to turn all that stuff into lithorite, right? So platinum... Does it, is there like an ore? Yeah, there's a platinum ore. Does it show where that generates? Mars, Venus, Terra Nova, Neptune, Luna, Nova, Stella, Io, Proxima, Titan, Kel, Deep Dark, um, Overworld, 0. Point, wow, way down low, 0.08%. Twilight Force, 0.07%. Hmm. <laughs> So we're gonna need a way to get this stuff. Now the other way we were getting this, if we go back here, the pulverized platinum, you can get that as a byproduct if we pulverize nickel. Where is that? Yeah, so we get a 10% chance when we pull, yeah, when we pulverize nickel ore, 10% chance of this. So we're gonna need like either a lot of nickel or we're gonna need a lot of platinum ore in order to really do this. Now it looks like there is another platinum ore. I wonder how rare that is. Ooh, that is less rare. In fact, that's actually really good. 0.43% chance. And that also gives you, was it three? Ooh, we might have to go into the nether and get this stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's still less than half of a percent, but that is many, many times better than trying to find the regular platinum and it gives you three of them. That's pretty good. We might do that. Now it says that you can find this at Y3, which is fine. We just drill all the way down to the bottom of the nether rack and then we vein mine. Uh, just gotta watch out for the, um, the lava leaks and stuff, which I don't think spawn until like Y18 or so. Maybe it's all the way up to 12. But I think that might be a much better way of getting this material that we're looking for. But anyway, guys, we're going to have to worry about that next episode. We got plenty of our terrestrial artifacts. We're going to be able to make all the litharite we need, which is absolutely fantastic. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.